We're waiting. Did, did you guys get a notification about this before now? <laughs> I'm just curious. Anyway, let me uh, pull it up on my computer here real quick, folks. <coughs> so I can see what you guys are saying. So we had a lot of fun last night, everybody. I mean, it was amazing. He, we were, it was great. Beforehand, we were over at the Duke of Enmore pub and we were just, you know, we got to see uh, quite a few supporters came through there. We had Jojo, we had Karen, uh, who you guys may know as KCC over on Laura's channel or uh, Purple's channel. Uh, we had Carol Ann Fitzgerald, we had Penelope Muldoon, Liang, we had uh, Mark and his daughters were there. Uh, his son and his, his, his son's fiance showed up. Uh, so we had this really, really great crowd over at the Duke of Enmore pub before the show, and it was really great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was just, it was brilliant. Sorry, everybody, that I'm just now starting, but I intended to go much earlier, but I got a killer headache started coming on, and I had to get, ta I had to get that taken care of. I couldn't have gone live with that. It would have just been absolutely nightmare. Uh, so the, I got my ibuprofen, and I've now, yeah, I've gotten... Uh, you know, it's it's going down. It's it's like a dull roar now. So now I can go live. So sorry that it, it took so long, folks. It's just I was getting this headache that was just like, oh man, it was horrible. No, so do you Mr. Mr. Capaldi, <laughs> Mr. Capaldi went over and got some noodles. Yep. Uh, I don't know where the thing went, but I had some uh, was spicy shrimp noodles. And hey, you know what? Once I ate that, I started feeling a lot better. The ibuprofen started kicking, so now I'm here. Sorry, I'm so late, uh, but. We got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. So, do you want to know the truth? Do they want to know the truth? Okay, what's the truth, Haver? The, the truth Come on, Haver. The truth was, the truth was, <laughs> you were watching that Aussie Rules football game, and you were really enjoying it because it wasn't just the blokes that were playing it; it was the <laughs> ladies. We were watching the ladies <laughs> Australian football league. Yeah, we were watching that. So that was interesting. Hey, man, those girls play pretty good, man. Those those ladies are, you know. When they get rough. They, they get rough, rough too. Rough and tough. Yeah. Did you see that one that had, like, road rash oh, all down uh, her arm? It was like, I was like, jeez, whoa. You wouldn't want to get in an argument with them. Right. That's, uh, there was a... There was an old uh, commercial, Foster's commercial in um, in the U.S. I remember, and it was like you know Foster's Australian for beer, might you know right? But it would always have this thing like it was funny. There was this one where it shows like it shows like this like bar like maybe out in the outback. It's like it looks like in a very like rural setting or whatever, and you see like this this lady coming out and she's like tossing this dude off of the the, the front steps of the bar or whatever it is, and it said. Uh, it said something like uh, Sheila or whatever it said about it. You know, it was, it was, it was Australian for, you know, woman or whatever, basically kind of showing that she was tough and rugged and, you know, <laughs> ready to toss a guy out on his ear. And then it cuts to the can of Foster's and it says Foster's, Australian for beer, mate. Anyway, so it was a really funny commercial back in the day. But uh, that's what these uh, Australian ladies in the football league there kind of reminded me of. They're pretty tough, tough as tough as nails, it seems. So... Hi, hey, K hey, Karen, how you doing? Good to see you. Hi, Paula. Hi, Travis. Hi, Linda. Uh, hi, Pom Pom. Hi, Carol Ann. Um, oh, Penny. Hey, Pen Muldoon. Good to see you. <laughs> Ziggy, okay. Okay. you love the banner? See, we took that with us last night, folks. And man, this thing, this thing was like a magnet. We, we unfurled this thing and everybody was wanting to come over and take a picture. And so we were handing them out the cards that uh, Mr. Hodnot had made, uh, which you can see right here. So this is the front. It's, uh, it's a little card and it has like making the murder on the front of it, right? And then on the back, Mark had, you know, this, this put on it. And it's basically just, uh, you know, it's it's basically just saying that you know if you want more news on the on the case or whatever uh, you can tune into you know for uh, news and chat to me uh, for thought provoking music to Stacy and so we were handing these out at the show um, you know creating you know all the buzz we can all the you know doing what we can to to create you know enough uh, to create awareness as best we can so. Uh, yeah, so that, that banner was really cool because, man, the people really loved it. They saw it. They all wanted to come take a picture with it, take a picture with us. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun last night, folks. I mean, it was a blast. 
Uh, getting to meet everybody over at the Duke of Enmore pub before was awesome. Uh, hi, Anna Gaines. Hi, Charla. Um, let's see what else we got here. Did a drop bear land on your head? Nope, no drop bears. That's fake news, Travis. Fake news, buddy. No such thing. <laughs> You said, girl, you were going to get mail. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. I'll get mail. Oh, the, the Sydney Bridge? Yeah. Well, Sean, that's where we are. We're near that bridge. Yeah, right. So, oh, those of you who, well, anyway, this is where, this is kind of where we're at. For those of you who are wondering, we're in a little place right now, all day today, uh, known as the Rocks in Sydney. It's just the, the district, that's just what they call it. It's known as the Rocks. And so, that's what that's what you're seeing here is this the harbor here in Sydney essentially uh, that big bridge we went over that yesterday we took a few pictures with that bridge in the background I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see that yet oh that looks terrible because this thing is coming through blurry but um, well I'll tell you, post a picture of this on Twitter or something for you guys a little bit later um, oh then we got why, this why is Mark, in honor of Mark because Mark is having to run home today to to get his bag that he forgot and uh, obviously to vote uh, here in Australia, it's time to uh, elect, uh, you know, or it's, time, it's an election time. And then, I'm so glad you guys won't be able to see this. Paul seems to think I'm an aborigine and he seems, he seems to think that that's the dude right there. So uh, anyways, I know you guys are probably not seeing this very well. It's probably coming through kind of blurry, at least it looks like it is on my computer. So I do apologize for that. No, don't drink Foster's. <laughs> I actually, I think I've only had Foster's a couple times in my life, but um, I just thought the commercials were funny. So I, they, they were, and they were, they were entertaining. I mean, that was back at the time when Crocodile Dundee movies were coming out, you know. It was just, Australian culture was just highly popular in, in the U.S. at that time. So um, that's kind of, I think, where that was coming from. Uh, KB Logger was always better in my opinion. Oh, see, Travis thinks that there's better than uh, than uh, Foster's. What were you guys drinking yesterday? What was the, the oh, the Furfy, right? But then you you tried, a, was it a Hawks? The Hawks, Hawks. Hawks, I had the Hawks. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. And but you guys were drinking the Furfy. Until it ran out. Yeah, the <laughs> Furfy ran out. <laughs> that tells you how good it is, right? They ran out of it. Fortunately, see, Paul's in heaven right now, folks. Let me just tell you, Paul, he's in heaven right now. Next he's, door. He's, he literally walks out the door, walks about 15 feet, and he's in the freaking pub where he can get a beer. So, I mean, he's, you know, he's in, he's in heaven right now. <laughs> I remember Foster's too. I remember the commercials exactly. So happy to catch you live. Hey, Rhonda. Um, that's great. I was just watching Laura. Um, Ad for the thing you were just at love the pictures great work guys thank you so much Linda uh, let's see wow great love it congrats thank you thank you uh, good job to the hod <laughs> you guys are the best thank you so much Linda and then let's see here whoops sorry the chat's jumping around on me folks I am sorry about that pixelization folks it looks like it got better when it's just me I hope Ooh, it that doesn't me. get too I bad switch off my Wi-Fi. Oh, there you go. That might help. Uh, let's see. Uh, see, I should have I should have thought to take a bunch of the cards with me. Oh, yeah, Pen. Too bad we didn't give you a stack. Maybe we can send her a stack while we're here. I'm sure we can. Hit me up on Messenger, Pen. We'll try to arrange sending you a stack. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hi, Big E and Paul and the Hod and everyone else. Hey, hi, little Barb. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Sorry, the chat is a little crazy. It's jumping around kind of a lot. Did you drop bears? Okay, no, no drop bears. Once again, uh, let's see. <laughs> mail me one of those, Eric Cozy. Absolutely, Ziggy, I'll mail you one. Uh, let's see. I should have thought I'd take a bunch. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Fake LOL. Yeah. Glad you guys are having a ball. Yeah, it's, we're having a blast. It was so fun last night meeting everybody. I mean, we got to meet up with everybody before the show. Then we were hanging out outside after the show. We're taking pictures in front of the marquee uh, with the sign. Uh, you know, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. It was it was really just a lot of fun. And I cannot wait for Melbourne to to do it all again because it was just a heck of a lot of fun. 
Uh, let's see, glad you guys are having a ball. Let's see, Caroline, no it's not. Um, <laughs> I have vague memories of Foster's. <laughs> How was Night Rider? Night Rider was great. She was good. Uh, how, to explain, how do you explain the headache? Oh, uh, I really wasn't drinking much, but you know, I guess, you know, I don't drink as much as I used to in my 20s, so it could be that the four or five beers and, well, we had some the, of the, the yeah, foig. You're the foig you were getting there. So I was having a little bit of hard liquor with my beer last night. Uh, didn't drink heavily, but yeah, it, it might have, it might have precipitated the headache. Uh, that's what Travis is getting at, folks. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> Are you going to mention about the other visitor that we brought with us? I uh, well, of course, everybody you know, Stacy's here with us. Uh, he's not here at the moment. Oh, but we do have. Oh, you're talking about him too. <laughs> we have Stacy here. He's uh, he's actually walking around seeing the sights at the moment, yeah. so he's not here with us. But that's okay. Um, they love the banner before and after the event. Was so cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Jojo was there. We got to meet Jojo. She's awesome. That was awesome. I, it's just such a good time. To see everybody coming out and showing their support. And this is, you know, this for me, this is just what the case needs. It needs people coming out, showing the interest, getting the education about the case, learning about what's going on in this case, and understanding the aspects of this case. I think it's huge. So, Paul wanted me to show you guys real quick our other little guest here besides Stacy, and that is Sean. Hey, buddy, how you doing there? <laughs> I don't know how many of you watch. Um, Sean the Sheep, but it's on Amazon Prime, if you have Amazon Prime. Uh, funny little show, funny. Uh, yeah, sorry about the pixelization, guys. There's not much I can do. Paul did turn off his Wi-Fi, so it does look like it's improved a little bit, uh, and I hope it will stabilize. Um, if, it, if it happens anything like when we were at Mark's house, we just need Stacy to walk in. If Stacy walks in, it'll all stabilize. So he's St Stacy's the good luck charm. Uh, but unfortunately, he's running around seeing the sights right now. So we've got uh, nothing but love for Stacy. So let him go and hang out and see Australia. Um, you skipped a bit. I skipped, skipped a bit. You skipped a bit. What did I skip? The journey from Mark's house to here. The yeah, I haven't skipped anything. I'm just talking. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was cool about the trip? We're, uh, hold on. Let me get through the comments okay, here. Okay. Sorry, Drop scared. bears are real. You just haven't encountered one yet. <laughs> hey, hey, Linda, do you have that link that you sent me? Can you can you post that link here for everybody? If if you have trouble doing it, can you send it over to J Pom Pom and let her? <laughs> Drop bears are fake news, folks. Fake news. <laughs> yeah, but, but you bought it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, are droppers anything like snipe? Yeah, kind of, except, except the, yeah, well, snipes actually don't exist as far as I know, but the, the idea of drop bears is, is that they're koalas. It's, they're trying to say that koalas will drop out of trees and like maul you and attack you. I mean, that's just not the way it works. Just not the way it happens. So, they're shy. Um, they're shy. yeah, they are. They're pretty shy creatures. Well, not always though. I mean, I've seen some that got, I remember watching a video where a lady went out. It was a, um, a lady that went out and she was at a little koala thing. And one of the koala, a koala came up to her and like started climbing up on her. And she was holding the koala like a baby almost at one point. But then the koala, like she wanted to put the koala down, then she started to realize that the koala could get a little, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it got a little dicey. It was interesting. But anyway, yes, koalas are interesting. The rocks is in the harbor. Yes, that's where we are. If you guys saw the thumbnail, the thumbnail, the picture behind me was the harbor. Uh, you could see the this really, really cool building, uh, the building and behind me there. You know what? Here, let's, let's go take a look. Here. I'll uh, have trouble seeing your comments while we do this, folks, but... <laughs> All right, let me turn this around so you guys can see. So this is where we are in the harbor. You can see that building over there is under construction. It's got all the cranes on it and everything. Uh, you know, you can see the harbor here. If I go too far away from the room, I'll lose the Wi-Fi, so I can't do that, unfortunately. But anyways, so... Getting back to 
This is obviously the place where we are. Nice room. There's the uh, there's the ladies Australian. Oh uh, no! Oh, the ladies game is over. Now it's the guys. So we've been watching this Australian league uh, football because we're gonna be going to a game. So I figured it'd be a good idea for me to watch a few of the games and uh, kind of get an understanding a little bit of the rules so that I won't be completely lost when we go to the football game. Okay. So I'll midday, I'll, I'll nip to the pub. You want to have a dog? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm good. <laughs> half. <laughs> I'll bet you half. You can do it. All right. Okay, buddy. See that man? He loves his his uh, his beer. Three people, three different spellings. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yep, Stacy's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Sean, Sean the Sheep. It's a funny little show. It's 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 actually like claymation. The way that they make it, it's like made like claymation. It's interesting. It's funny. It's 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 humorous. You sound like an old married couple. Yeah, well, look at this, folks. Look, okay, here. Let me just get through some comments here. Um, so they are real bears, then. Duh. Yeah, well, koalas are real bears, but they just don't do what what. They don't drop out of trees and maul you. They don't do that. <laughs> They're actually kind of slower moving creatures, kind of like a sloth. Not as not as bad, not as not as slow moving as a sloth, but but kind of you know that way. Not no, they aren't real super quick movers, basically. Dysfunctional but still loving it. Yeah, I am sorry about the pixeling. Um, tell Paul to bring back a Bloody Mary. <laughs> Good day, good day, T1. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, let's see, Psst, folks. It's Sean. Sean is an old Scottish version, I believe. Please ask Paul for me. It's why I named my son Sean. Okay, yeah, could be, could be. Uh, let's see here. There you go. Hey, here, Jose. Have you seen? Have you have you seen any men at work? Oh, here. Absolutely, the rocks. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of construction going on. That's kind of what I was just showing outside too. Yeah, all kinds of construction, lots of workers around. Uh, in fact, funny story. Um, when we got here yesterday to the to the to the room, and like I said, literally 15 feet away from our door is is the pub, right? And so we went into the pub. We had the cards and. Paul was wearing his control question t-shirt and so there was three guys there at the bar that saw his shirt and started asking about it next thing you know Paul's turning around to me and he's all he's all you want to ask that guy right there and he's pointing at me <laughs> so I got up went over and just gave these guys the explanation about the control question gave them the you know explanation of why it's important uh, you know never leaving out the fact see some people forget Hey there! Hey, look what's up, Mr. Seabrook? How's it going? Yeah, pretty mate. So, uh, anyways, I explained to them how you know Fastbender was running around talking about how the control question was proof of Brendan's guilt. When like, we all know how exactly how freaking ridiculous that is, um, you know. So, uh, you know, we got to, so I got to explain to those guys, and they were just three workers that were just in there having a having a beer. Uh, and they, you know, they were just happy to be in there at the end of the day and they were having a beer and stuff. So I got to talk to them. They were all asking me, you know, about the staircase and making a murder and finding out where they could go to see it. Uh, like on, you know, you know, obviously it's on Netflix. Both of those shows are on Netflix. So informed these guys where they could go to check these out and that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so it was cool. You know, and we've just been meeting people here and there and we have a guy that, that we were, we went down to a shop here just down the street this morning and uh, the guy, the guy that was the cashier in the shop, saw Paul's shirt. Uh, I'm actually wearing this shirt I'm wearing right here, folks. This was given to me by Mr. Seabrook, so that's why I'm wearing this shirt today. Pretty cool. I love it. I love it. Got 
Got a little representation from Canada here. You guys know how much I love my international supporters. And Stephen and Brendan's international supporters. I mean, you guys are a big part of the equation. So I love being able to show off cool stuff like this shirt. Cool stuff like all of you folks coming out and hanging out with us at the Duke of Enmore pub beforehand. Uh, everybody hanging out afterwards in front of the marquee and taking pictures. It was all brilliant. It was just awesome. So cool. So much fun. Uh, it was. It's just been a, a blast, absolute blast. Uh, did you see Lauren and Steve on TV this morning? I did not. Definition of a drop bear: mythical marsupial resembling a koala, said to live in trees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so drop bears, not big foots, but little foots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that could be it, T1. Um, minute work on Aussie band from the '80s. Yep. Um, so since that got brought up, do you come from the land down under? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's one of their songs. And uh, so uh, did you catch Laura and Steve live on the morning show? No, I didn't catch that, sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't know they were gonna be on and I'm not real familiar with the Australian channels here. Uh, so I'm having trouble. The only reason I was able to find Australian league football was because I was able to go to the guide and go to sports and then get a list of things and then I was able to pick a sporting event. I don't know what's on all the channels or what channel to go to to see the news or any of that stuff. I just don't know. So, <laughs> Hi, Stacy Swoon. <laughs> so where is ACDC from? Uh, Linda posted a link for the video. Scroll up through the comments. There you go. Uh, tell Stacy his number one fan said hello. Is he still here or did he leave? He's gone. Oh, uh, he had to go. Cool guy. <laughs> it's, it's very muggy. Yeah. There's your, there's your beard, dude. Yeah, I know. I see. Uh, Stacy would do well in the outback. They do a lot of walkabout too. I, I actually would love to go on walkabout myself. I just won't have time uh, while I'm here. Canada. I freaking love it that you say Canada. That's freaking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Kind of in the dark. That's a bummer. Um, let's see. The original lead singer of ACDC was born in Scotland. Yes, right. Uh, Stacy would do well in the Outback. KCC, do you think? Do you think he just didn't get my dry humor? Uh, could be I didn't because uh, yeah. <laughs> I sometimes do that when I'm live because I don't always catch the subtleties of the joke. I <laughs> uh, wish I was there with you. Hey, Mark. Well, you'll be here soon enough, buddy. And, and, and trust me, we'll be going live again, so you'll be part of him. <laughs> we love the Hod, folks. We love him. He's a good guy. <laughs> Great guy. Uh, see, yep, and he had no idea that they are a band. <laughs> the Hod. Yes, I freaking love I love the fact that the Hod is catching on. He's the Hop. <laughs> Hello, April from Cali. Awesome. How you doing? Uh, we are at the Rocks in Sydney. Um, awesome, awesome. You shared pics with some of uh, Laura's Patreons. Awesome, awesome. Um, but we're in a place in Sydney called, known as the, the District. It's kind of known as the Rocks. It's an old, it's like an old, um, it's a very old section of the city. Uh, and like I said, well, I have another video that I recorded this morning on my GoPro that I won't be able to upload until later, but, or until I get home, but... But this area of the city is like, uh, from what Mark was saying is, is that when, when Sydney was being built in this area, Sydney was being built back in the day, you know, that the workers all stayed here in this area, in the rocks. And there was just a bunch of cottages. And one of the things, this place that we're staying in right here was one of the cottages. Uh, there's, there's this one, and there's, there's also a second floor above us. Mark, Mark and Stacy are in the room above us here. Um, and... So these were all converted from these like worker cottages to now become these like, you know, hotel rooms basically, essentially. So uh, it's really cool. They're really nice. They're really cool. And I got to say, I love all the brick and, and just stonework architecture as you go around this part of, of Sydney. I just love it. I just, I love all the brickwork. I, you know, I kind of dig that Tudor style of building with the red bricks and stuff. And you kind of see a lot of that red brick around here. It's really cool. I like that. It's, for me, that's kind of a cool, uh, you know, thing. So uh, it's absolutely wonderful being here. It's really cool getting to see a lot of cool stuff. So strange beer. 
I see some havering. <laughs> see, I was thinking that too. Drop bears are real. <laughs> uh, so they are real bears. <laughs> no, yeah, it's people. Uh, hey, have you seen Men at Work? Oh, we already got past oh, that. Men at you work, come man. to the, yeah. Let's see here. Well, I was talking about the land down under mostly. <laughs> Did you catch Laura and Steve live? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Um, love the sign for the match. Pretty sweet. Awesome. Yeah, we like I said, that thing was getting lots of attention last night. And I imagine it's probably going to get a lot of attention in Melbourne, too. Um, and uh, we're going to be handing out more cards there and all that. I got to, I got to, when I'm done here, I have to, um, I have to set up something. Anybody who's in Sydney wants to come see us. You can come and hang out with us in the pub right here. It's, I'm not kidding. It's like 15 feet away. <laughs> so if you want to come down to the rocks, message me, you know, do whatever, message me or, you know, you know, whatever you got, you know, find a way to message me. You know, I mean, there's numerous ways. My email is xgra, sorry. My email is Eric Jose M A M uh, uh, at gmail.com. Let me know. Uh, I already have one person who's looking to meet up with me today. So after I'm done with this live, I'm going to be going ahead and, you know, giving out the location where people can come to the pub uh, if they want to meet with us today. We do have some things going on. We know what we're doing. We have, I know tonight we have, we're at Sydney Opera House. Uh, did we have something else for today? Uh, well, it depends when Mark gets back. Depends when Mark gets back. Yeah, okay. because I think we were planning on going up that re revolving tower. Oh yeah, that revolving tower. Well, that looks cool. I think cool. that might be late. I think that might be either before or after we go and see this this very reverent or is it irreverent? Re irreverent, yeah. irreverent female comedian. Yeah. which should be quite good because Mark's got quite a dry sense of humour. So mm -hmm. I can just imagine what this comedian is going to be like. <laughs> uh, tells his yeah. Let's see. Uh, do you think? Oh. Oh yeah. Um. Just when you've got time. Yeah. Let's see. Have you seen any kangaroos or cockatoos? Have not. Have not seen any cockatoos. Have haven't seen any kangaroos yet. Um. That. Oh yeah. That's what we were kind of supposed to go do today. Was we were potentially we were kind of hoping to go see uh go down to like the zoo or something to see some of the uh australian animals and stuff like that but i don't know we'll have to see how it works out um because i am trying to meet up with some people today i do have somebody messaging me wanting to come meet up so hopefully we might get a few more people interested um we don't have a job you know yeah so i don't really know the address here i can get it from mark um and uh you know we'll tr I'll, I'll do a a tweet there you go, folks. That's what I'll do. I'll tweet it. That way all of you can find it and get access to it. That's, for me, the easiest way. So, well, we're at a place called Workman's Dwellings. That's, well, in going along with what I told you, these used to be workmen's, uh, you know, little, you know, these, these all used to be little houses for the workmen's that were the workers that kind of built up this area. Um, and so now they've redesigned it into, you know, hotels or lodging or basically whatever. And... So now it's these little dwellings are, you know, you know, they're, it's pretty cool, but that's why it's called workman dwellings because back in the day, this is where the workers lived when they were building this area. So it's kind of cool. In excess is a great Aussie band. Yeah. I love in excess. They're a good band. My temper at humor was an epic fail. Oh my God. Please don't make me scroll back up and try to find it. <laughs> Have a great time in Melbourne, guys. Got to head out. See you later, Karen. Uh, let's see here. I had asked if you had seen any minute work. I was being silly. Oh, yeah. Okay. I did kind of get it. I just, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I did kind of get it. I was just, you know, uh, I just, it caused me to think of the fact that when I walk out my front door, I see a lot of men working. It just caused me to think of that. So, yeah, I did get it. I did get what you were saying, Rhonda. Um, sorry if I didn't chuckle a little bit, but I, I did understand. I did get it. Uh, let's see. Are you in your room that you are staying in or in a public area? I'm in my, this is, this is where we're staying. This is our room right now. This is, uh, I'm actually in the kitchen. Uh, here, let me show you. See that? That's the stove over here. 
the sink, you know. So that's 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 where we're actually in the kitchen right now of uh, of where we're staying. So now let's see here. It's uh, hold on, what time is it? I can't tell what time it is right now because my phone is the only thing that's a, that's giving me the proper time at the moment. Let's see. Hey, mate, you're in the rocks. Make sure you go to King Cross. Okay. There's an address. Um, hi. Oh. Okay, here we go. We got an address for you, folks. If you want to come meet up with us here at the pub where we're at, the address is Hotel Palisade, uh, 35 to 37 Beltington. Betting. Betting. Beddington Street. Okay. That's uh, Millen Point. Miller. Miller. Miller's, Miller's Point. Miller's Point. Uh, NSW 2000. So if you guys are interested, come down and have a beer with us at the pub. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet this out on Twitter and, you know, respond to it on Twitter. Let us know if you're interested in coming down. Um, you know, we're, you know, eventually we are going to head off to the Sydney Opera House later tonight. Well, you know, or, you know, maybe in about a few hours, maybe three or four hours, we might be heading over that way. So, Hopefully, you know, within the next three or four hours, you guys can come down and meet with us here at the pub, have a beer with us, and, you know, and uh, like I said, I got my little GoPro, you know, and we can, uh, we can do a little supporter video and everything, so you guys can, we can show you guys off and um, keep that conversation going, keep talking about it, you know, guys, you guys know how much I love that, uh, after I did the little video recently with, you know, the clip of Dean String saying how we talk about it, if we want change, if we want to see effective change, how do we do that? We talk about it and we continue to talk about it. And so that's what we're here. That's what we do. That's what I do. You guys see me almost every day, right? I'm just continue talking about it till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> uh, you should go to the zoo and see. I want to. Uh, koalas are my favorite animal. It has been since I was a kid. Uh, so I would really love to go see them. Absolutely would love to go see them. I had a co koala cuddly toy when I was a kid, isn't it? <laughs> uh, let's see, catch a ferry to Taronga Zoo. I don't know if we have time, but maybe I'll look into that. If I do want to give everybody a chance to come meet up with us today, so I might not do that today. We might have to maybe try and squeeze that in another time. Or we might find a zoo in Melbourne. I'm sure they've probably got a zoo down there. Um, uh, let's see, not sure when it's on. I think tonight she posted in the Facebook MEM group earlier. Maybe, okay. So, uh, let's see what else we got here. So, one of the things, you know, all the little birdies on, on the Hod Street love to hear the ear cozy go tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Uh, yeah, I do a live, uh, do a live of water going down the drain. Yeah, I've been trying to do that, Ziggy. Unfortunately, I got to find the right ones. I don't know what it is about the toilets here, but they're not the the bottom of the bowl is doesn't have like a circular opening. It's it's shaped. It's actually shaped kind of like this, and it's really odd because so it's flat on one side, right? It's like flat on one side, and then it's like it's like an arch almost. So it's like this really oddly shaped you know, opening. And what happens when you flush is the water all just, just, it just goes straight down and goes right out. It doesn't, there is no swirl either way. It's just like, it just goes straight down. It's odd. So I've been looking for a sink that I can get that effect to happen in, but I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't, so far haven't been seeing any swirls here. Uh, let's see. Good God. Have Mark say the address in Australian. Oh God. Uh, let's see. I thought we were about to start talk, start talking about strippers, maybe the thunder from John. <laughs> you people have dirty minds. No, <laughs> I better not try to be humorous anymore. Okay, jeez, minds. What were you, some of the comments you made about that moment, ladies? Is that football? <laughs> I read stripper too. Yeah, everybody's everybody's got strippers on the on the brain. <laughs> it must be that time of night in America. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so last night we went and saw uh, Night Rider Drizzen Rudolph. 
Uh, some very interesting things I feel were, that were talked about. Uh, you know, it, it's they started out with asking uh, Stephen Drizzen uh, about how he came to you know be knowledgeable about you know course confessions and 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 you know and to basically how he where he you know where he became aware of them how he became aware of them and and you know that sort of stuff and he just talked about it this way he said there's two things that usually cause a coerced confession or an involuntary confession he said the first thing is um you know overzealous or just you know uh desperate law enforcement da's or whatever to pin a crime on somebody he said that's usually one big part of it and he said then the other part of it is the the mentality of the accused the person who is being interrogated um often they have limitations somewhat some limitations uh and that sort of thing and then those two things together combined with overzealous law enforcement and um you know suspects that just aren't able to hold their own really in a, in a situation with uh you know seasoned detectives seasoned investigators uh who are very intimidating obviously uh in many ways and that these two things usually combine together to create these these really horrendous false confessions like we see with brendan and so that was one of the things that i found was interesting You see here. I've been watching their stuff on YouTube. They're great. Yeah. I want to know if koala smell like eucalyptus. Okay. I just love the sound of Laura Nyrider and Stephen Drizzen's voices. Powerful yet compassionate. Yep. Laura is very, very, uh, very passionate too. That's the thing I like about Laura. I've been watching this stuff. Okay. Let's see. I already read that. Uh, I've read they smell pretty funky, but their fur is very soft. Yeah, for that's what I've heard too. That the, they tend to get pretty ripe. Uh, what is the weather temperature like there? It's it's not bad. It's act the temperature is actually okay. It's not too bad. It's the the humidity here. I mean, you start walking and 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 like you know expending expending any amount of energy. Uh, and you just start sweating. Like, it's just like, you. Sh I mean, I was dying last night over at the Duke of Enmore pub because I, I was having to continually walk outside because inside it was so warm. We had so many people in there and it was getting so warm in there and the humidity was just making it, whoa, really bad. So we were kept having to walk outside. We found this little pot, spot in the outdoor garden part of the Duke of Enmore uh, uh, pub there's this little outdoor garden area and we found this brilliant fan that was blowing right on us it was like oh sweet so we were able to go out there and get cool and go back in and you know drink some more beer and anyway no <laughs> so we were having a great time here because it did Steven or did Drizzen and Laura discuss their strategy for beating moving forward or if they are anticipating KZ and open a window basically they just say that that Brendan has options and the, the options, the shape that those options take is basically he is, um, he's all obviously could be, could receive a pardon from, uh, governor Evers. That's, that's a possibility. Um, that's, you know, one possible route. The other one is, is, is they pointed out that Brendan right now is in the same situation that Stephen was in at the end of MAM one. Okay, at the end of it now, for those of you who may not understand what that means, at the end of MAM one, Stephen had not, he didn't have Kathleen Zellner yet. She didn't come on until like April or I think March or April in 2016. So he didn't have her when MAM one came out because that came out in December of 2015, right? So you understand. So at the end of at, at, when MAM one came out, Stephen didn't have anything going. He didn't have motion for post conviction relief going. Well, he had a pro se one going. Um, but that's a different story. Um, but then Kathleen Zellner comes on and, and files the motion for post-conviction relief. So what they were pointing out is that they still have that, they still have that option with Brendan. They can still file a motion for post-conviction relief for Brendan. So she was talking about that these are the, the, some of the options that Brendan has. And what I found particularly 
um, good about it was the way she sounded so positive talking about it. Um, you know, there's, it's, it always seems like everybody gets despairing when they talk about Brendan now after what happened with Dion Bank. It's, there's always so much despair, but I did not hear any despair in, in Laura Nyrider's voice. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I, I, she seems to, she seems to think that they're, that they're going to be able to help Brendan eventually that, you know, and, and Hey, I'm, you know, I'm wondering personally, I mean, don't the same, the same facts about the death of Teresa Halbach that pertain to Stephen Avery in his case, don't those same facts pertain to Brendan? I mean, right. To prove there's a murder, you have to prove there's a body, right? And Having said that, don't the, doesn't the bone issue apply to Brendan as well? Isn't it hard to prove that Teresa was was killed by Stephen or Brendan or whatever when 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 things are so sketchy, you know? And and with all the new stuff coming out, especially regarding these bones, the violation of statute, that all should apply to Brendan just as much as it applies to Stephen in my mind that it should, it should equally apply to Brendan. Because like I said, that's, those, those bones are the proof that a murder took place. Without that, you don't have a case. You gotta be able to, you gotta, you gotta be able to prove that there was a murder, right? So that's why with, with the violation of statute, I feel that that should also be able to apply to Brendan. And I, I didn't hear, I, I can't, Laura and I writer didn't say that herself, about the bone issue, she didn't bring it up. You know, she didn't bring up the statute, the violation of statute. She didn't bring up any of that. But to me, it seems like it should. It has a legally valid confession. So, okay, so the the legally valid confession stands in the way of of that apparently. So, I guess I guess that means that when the state coerces a confession out of you, the rules don't matter anymore. Statute doesn't matter anymore. If I'm if I'm understanding Travis correctly, which is a shame, truly is a real shame, absolutely. Uh, so, but you know, it is what it is. T T one wants to know if BD is willing to accept the pardon. I I don't know. I by the fact that Nye Rider suggested it as a possible option. I, that leads me to believe that they've had the discussion with Brendan uh, about that possibility. Could be that he's open to it. Um, I know Brendan just really wants to get out of, of, of jail. I mean, that's understandable. It's absolutely understandable. But I can understand why you guys are asking that question because, you know, yeah, you want to see Brendan get out and you want to see all the, the bad actors in this you want to see them made, you know, made to be accountable for it, right? And that's what we want to see. I want to see that. I definitely want to see that. Having said that, you know, if Brendan, if Brendan's fine with with a pardon and he and he wants to accept a pardon, uh, then I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, it, it, it's 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 his choice, obviously, and 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 I want him, you know, I want him to to be able to get out. Um, and live some part of his life, uh, you know, so, but I got to say, like I said, the fact that they were talking about it leads me to believe that they have had this conversation with Brendan and that he may be open to that, uh, possibility, but I really want to see it happen another way. I really want to see it. I really want to see Brendan get vindicated. Um, you know, let's see, you, you don't really agree to an unconditional pardon if they put conditions that he waives a civil case, he would have to, he would have to make the choice uh, Eric Jose mentions. Okay, so there you go. If they get a pardon, then any money uh, of the scumbag cops will not, yeah, they won't be held accountable. That's the problem with a pardon. Nobody's gonna end up getting held accountable. It's just gonna go away, right? Brendan will be out, but the whole thing will go away. Um, which, you know, like I said, it's not the ideal situation. I really would prefer to see this all come around uh, and, and, and the bad actors in this, you know, be, be held accountable. That's what I really like to see. Uh, Fastbender and Weigert at the top. At the top. Man, those two guys. I just, 
I just want to see those guys knock down several pegs. Several. Because those guys are just bad. What about the pros? Kratz is bad too. But Kratz has been knocked down several pegs already. Yeah. I would argue, right? <laughs> he, 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 we didn't fast bend it. They, they were the ones that were the, the puppets. Yeah. He, he was the puppet master. That's possibly true. But look, is, is, is Ken Kratz still got his hand up fast bender's backside now? And he's, still, and he's making Fassbender go out on all these TV shows and radio shows and spout the freaking lies that he spouts? Wouldn't surprise that's me. his own choice. <laughs> from, as far as I can tell, that's Fassbender's own choice. Mm -hmm. I can't blame Kratz for that. So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was going to say was coming to Fassbender and Uyghur. Last night at the show, folks, this is one of the things that stood out to me big time. Huge. David Rudolph began to talk about Brendan. And when he did... He's, he was he started talking about Brendan and he tried to he, he he wanted to mention the names of the officers coercing him right coercing Brendan so he, he says uh, yeah you know the the two the two investigators uh, fast binder and um, I can't even remember the other one and I was just like oh yes these two these two jerks are just such jerks that their names aren't even being remembered. Like, like, I mean, he just butchered Fastbender's name with Fastbinder and then couldn't even remember Weaker. It's like, yes, these guys are totally forgettable. Absolutely forgettable. But then again, they're not forgettable because of the horrendous nature of the act that they committed. Uh, but the fact that, that David Rudolph couldn't remember their names, I was like, oh, I was just, yes, yes. What, what, what they did is, is more memorable, far more memorable than their <laughs> than names. Their names. Than their names. Yeah, were, rather, exactly. We know who they are. Eventually, 10 years from now, when they talk about Brendan Dassey's case, they aren't going to say, remember what Weaker and Fassbender did? They're probably just going to say, remember what those two asshole detectives did to Brendan? <laughs> I mean, they're not, the names aren't even going to come in. It's just going to be those two jerks, you know, right? I mean, so... <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Sick mother, never mind. He know, uh, he needs to melt away into the faraway Narnia. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Try to check out these ch comments. Uh, it could sort of be a lose lose position, freedom but no compensation. Right. That's that's the worry I have. I completely agree with you, Eric Jose. Oh, Jesus, I wish this thing would stop jumping around so much. Apologies, I yeah, I'm in the pub. <laughs> I completely agree. Here. Yeah, that one's mine, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, set it down so I can grab it? Yeah. Okay, here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you and your day drinking, Paul. Jeez. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? It's gone midnight in Scotland. <laughs> Oh, you just mind me having a drink at night time. It's night time in Scotland. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with you, Eric Cozy. I'm happy with Brendan chooses, uh, but would, would, but would prefer for him to be exonerated. Absolutely, Penn. That's you know, I want to see the bad actors be held accountable. That's what needs yeah. to happen here. Okay, look. As a supporter, don't you get sick of hearing idiots tell you that because you support Stephen and Brendan and because you point out the BS in this case, that you're hurting the hall box, right? Yeah. That we are hurting the hall box? Bull crap. That's why the bad actors need to be held accountable in this because they need to realize they hurt the hall box. They did this to the hall box, not us. And that is the big reason why the conversation needs to continue and it needs to go on and on and on it needs to spread wider by the way thank you so much Sharon very kind thank you so much but that's why this conversation needs to continue because we can't have idiots like Fassbender and Uyghur thinking it's okay to go around committing child abuse just because they have a badge and they know that the judges are just going to sign off on it that's a problem that's why Dean Strang says we need to talk about it because this kind of crap is unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. So, got a little bit uh, my got a little bit my Irish up there, I guess. So, but uh, <laughs> get a little uh, passionate, but I know you guys love that. Wisconsin holds the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what was in Sharon's message. 
Have a drink on me. I love and appreciate your dedication. Good, are you gonna, hey Sharon, are you gonna send me a voice message today? You know I love hearing your, your Scottish accent. I love it, thanks. <laughs> uh, we want Uyghur and Fassbender to be infamous. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm, I was, just to talk about something in the local news kind of around here right now. The, there was a, and somebody from Australia, I guess, went over with an assault rifle over to New Zealand and shot up a, um, a church over there and killed some people and it was really bad, right? And I gotta say, I really liked the New Zealand PM, the way that she handled this. It was awesome. And, and this is the way I kind of maybe hope we can move forward talking about Fassbender and Uyghur in a sense. But she talked about this shooter and she talked about like things he had done and all that stuff. And, but she followed it up by saying, but I will not be saying his name. He will not be getting any fame from this, from his name coming out of my mouth. If you're going to say names, if you're going to talk about people, talk about the victims, say their names. Get, make people aware of their names. Forget this idiot who came in with a gun and shot everything up and, and, and created all this horror. Don't, don't celebrate him. Don't talk about his name. Let his name be forgotten. I liked that. I really did. I really thought that was good. Uh, so I, my hat's off to the New Zealand PM. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> We want Uyghur and Fassbender under Kratz and Kratz to be infamous. Absolutely. Um, accountable. Yes, I do. Yes. I <laughs> uh, love it when Eric Cozy gets passionate like this. <laughs> uh, that's the way to do it. No 15 minute. Uh, we all do. It don't feed the pig. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. You know, thank you, Sharon. Thank you. You know, um, I woke up this morning and Sharon had sent me a little picture of a bird spreading Vegemite on a piece of toast. Uh, I was like, oh man, I really wish I would have had a voice clip instead. <laughs> no, let's get it straight. Let's get it straight. <laughs> you woke up to the sound of your phone doing an alarm well, and yeah. it woke me up yeah. and I wondered where the alarm was coming from. <laughs> and I came through and shut your door <laughs> and <laughs> that pig in the alarm <laughs> and you're snoring there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Tough off topic in a sense. Is is today Teresa Hallbach's birthday? Today is March twenty uh yeah, actually I think it is. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Shoot, I forgot about that. I'll have to make I have to make a post for Facebook. Thanks for reminding me about that, by the way. Get so caught up in the traveling and yeah. everywhere that we gotta go, I, that completely slipped my mind, which is unforgivable. Uh, but I'm gonna no, I'm Mark, gonna do something Mark, about it. I'm, I think Mark reminded us before we did I that. think he did, he, but he, he like I said, us. we've been running around so much I kind of didn't think of it. So thanks for the reminder. Um, I need to I need to do something about that. Um, <laughs> Hi Julie, how you doing? It's him. Tomorrow, oh, it's tomorrow, it looks like. So that's good. I'll be able to get up in the morning and, and prepare a nice little uh, a nice little Facebook post uh, for, for Teresa. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, it, I knew it was coming up. I just, you know, I, you know, it's just been crazy. We've been just been running like chickens with our heads cut off, kind of. So, wiener and fat bend off. <laughs> uh, it's unforgivable. It's not unforgivable. You are there fighting her for her too. Absolutely, Sharon. I mean, it's all, it's about Teresa too. On my channel, it's about Teresa and her family just as much as it's about Steven and Brendan and the Averys and the Dassies. Um, and I think all of you know that about me. It's, she, she is every bit as important. Teresa is every bit as important. Uh, Teresa will never be forgotten here on my channel. She will never be diminished on my channel. Yeah. She, none of that. Teresa is is always going to get full respect here, always. So that's the way it is. So like I say, when it comes down to the state of Wisconsin trying to say that us supporters are hurting the the Hallbach family, and do not no no no. Let's be genuine, Wisconsin. You you screwed this up. 
You did this to yourself. You need to own it. Cut the crap, own your bullshit, and quit blaming us. I mean, you're so ridiculous, Wisconsin. Pull your freaking heads out of your ass. If you need to, go to the doctor and have them surgically removed from your ass. Whatever you gotta do, get your heads out of your ass because that's where your heads are at. Your heads are completely up your ass. Dude, what the hell is going on with the bones? Fallon, gone. Hey, gone. When you were writing that statute about preserving evidence, did that did that kind of occur to you at all when you were in there handing bones back that you knew you shouldn't have been handing back? Was was writing that statute going through your head at all gone? Just curious. Anyway. <laughs> so, Or barring surgery, they could go vote. Of course, the voters in Wisconsin can go vote and make a difference. Obviously, that's always an option as well. Thank you, Travis. That is definitely an option. But seriously, their heads aren't up their ass and they may need to go have them surgically removed. Uh, but obviously the voters can uh, take the place of the doctors and remove them from office and, and we can just, you know, bypass the surgeries. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not Dr. Pepper time. Uh-oh. <laughs> go on, tell him. Yep, here we go. Go on, tell him. So, folks, I wake up this morning, and I go to I go down to the little store here. Paul gives me some, some Australian money, and, uh, and he wants me to go get him some Pepsi Max, right? Because that's what he drinks. He doesn't like the sugar, right? So here it is, Pepsi Max. There you go. So, because he doesn't want the sugar. So I go. I spend $9.95 buying him Pepsi Max. I found one can of Dr. Pepper, <laughs> one can, okay? Then I had to buy Coke, right? So the rest of it was Coca-Cola, right? Okay, I get back here. I get back here, Paul's loading the crap into the refrigerator and he takes my one Dr. Pepper and he freaking opens it before I was ready. And he opens it, so by the time 30 minutes later, when I was ready to drink it, it was already getting flat. And it was like, oh, Jesus. So, got the mad Scotsman here, constantly peeing on my rug, you know? It's just like, jeez. <laughs> I just opened it by mistake. I just, just grabbed the can thinking it was a Pepsi Max. It looks nothing like a Pepsi Max. <laughs> Folks, let me show you the difference between a Dr. Pepper and a Pepsi Max. You see that? Red my, on the... Or, my, Purplish red on the Dr. Pepper and black on the Pepsi Max. My, my eyes weren't focused at that time of the morning. It was when I took one swig of it, I went, <laughs> Oh, brother. So that's where we're at. I don't have confidence in the Wisconsin voters. Well, we may have confidence in them, but maybe as we continue to educate them, they may come around. They may, they may start to, uh, you know, wonder about some of the things going on in this uh hopefully hopefully they will i know they're I, like i said when i was there in june last year when mark and i were there i mean we had like i said the one morning we were having breakfast we had a couple walk right up to us and just started you know engaging us about the case fully charged is it i think so so all right let's see it turned off so it doesn't drain yeah. oh it turned itself off Hold on just a second, folks. Um, all right. So, um, but you know, like I said, we were we were approached by this couple, and they were engaging us about the case and stuff, and we didn't mind. We were we were. And, you know, I know most people would probably have had an issue with somebody coming up and disturbing their their meal time or something, but we didn't mind. We were we were over the moon. Uh, it was a young couple came up, started talking to us about the case, asking us questions and things like that. And we loved it. We love it. We love to be able to, to spread the information and the awareness whenever we can. So uh, we had, I got approached by, I think probably about four or five different couples, you know, well, when I was there and other people that weren't couples, but it was, it, it tended to be a lot of uh, couples that would come up and talk to us. It was well, interesting. Manitoba. Yeah. And when we were at the rally last year, folks, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah but when I went and got those noodles, uh -huh. the guy in the shop, the guy in the he, shop. All he did was saw my t-shirt. Right. And he said, what's the latest news on the case? Mm -hmm. I was telling, I was telling everybody that we're going to be going over to give him 
you know, one of the one of the cards. We're going to be over giving the guy that Paul is talking about right there. We're going to be giving him one of those, so he can he can tune in and he can be part of the part of the uh, the movement, as it were. Maybe he'll even join the wrecking crew. Who knows? <laughs> so, um, Paul wanted me to talk about. You took a whole lot of notes there, dude. I'm depressed. Um, I'm depressed. You you took all those notes. Yeah, let's save that for last, actually. Okay. Um, so, so to move on, there was another little interesting thing. Let's see here. I had a diet Dr. Pepper the other day. It kept me thinking. Let's see. I kept thinking it was a real Dr. Pepper. Those soda people made it taste so close to the real thing, and it bothered me. <laughs> I personally can't drink those. I can't. They leave this really horrible aftertaste that whatever that NutraSweet or whatever it is they use uh, instead of sugar just leaves this just terrible terrible taste in my mouth uh, that doesn't go away uh, quickly so well, whatever <laughs> so it doesn't go away so I'm you know I'm not a big fan of the the Diet Dr. Pepper because like I said it just gives me that that really bad taste in my mouth I just don't like it uh, Calumet well, County did you. vote Wiener to sheriff. Yeah, I can see the voters being apprehensive in that respect. Still no excuse. Yeah, but he barely got in. You know, I mean, he was barely voted in. That was a very close race. He almost lost it. So it's not like it was like a, a resounding victory for, for Wiener, as oh, everybody's no. now calling him. So <laughs> can I be honest with you? Uh -huh. Dr. Pepper, it's not that bad. Ah. I, 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 I have regularly drunk Dr. Pepper and chosen it. Yeah. <laughs> what did Laura and Steve tell people they could do to support Brendan? Mainly taking an interest in his case, you know, writing to him because he loves to get the letters. He gets about the day, they were saying. And um, so those are the things you want to do. Hold on, I got to get plugged into power here. Yeah, he, don't, he definitely likes the letters. Yeah, so, and he tries to answer them as much as possible. Uh, you know, and, and so that's one thing you can do keep it, to help keep Brendan's spirits up. Uh, obviously voting, uh, you know, you all know that Travis is big on that. You know, that's the power we have. That's, I mean, we have to act together. We have to be, we have to act collectively, but that is the power that we have. If we don't like what we see, in our criminal justice system, the power we have is is we can vote people in that feel the way we do, uh, instead of leaving people in there that are bad or no, you know not moving not moving us forward, right? I mean that's a big deal. Um, so to get on to the next thing I want to talk about was there was one other thing that David Rudolph said. Obviously, aside from when he forgot when he said fast binder and couldn't even remember Uyghur in in the slightest sense, right? That was the first part I liked. But then David Rudolph said a little bit later, he was talking about how he has tried to create like these little seminars, mm -hmm. okay? Where, 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 where like trial judges could go and, and, and listen to a bunch of like forensic experts speak yeah. about how, how evidence is fabricated, how you can tell evidence has been fabricated, da 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 like all these things. Like he was willing to set it all up, set up the speakers, set up all these things, and all that these judges had to do was show up and pay attention. And that's all they had to do. They didn't have to pay all these people to be there. They didn't have to do anything. David Rudolph was willing to set this up because he cares about the criminal justice system so much that he wanted to help educate these judges and was willing to set all this stuff up on his own. And basically the judges weren't interested. Yeah. They just weren't interested. They don't care. If nobody's gonna make them, they're not gonna do it. They don't care. That's a problem, folks. Yeah. Think about it. Think about some judge who's been on the, on, the, on the bench for 40 years and the guy never goes back for any supplemental education or any training or any, anything to kind of refresh, nothing. And then you can just, when somebody like David comes along with a really golden opportunity like that, you can just kind of snub your nose at it. And, and, and you don't feel there's anything wrong with that, trial judges? Like, really? Seriously? 
<laughs> it's like, and, and David Rudolph was pointing out, you know, that that's where really the problem is in our criminal justice system. The appeals courts are, are getting educated by people like Stephen Drizzen and Laura Nyriders and, and, you know, the Kathleen Zellners, all these post-conviction attorneys. They're, 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 they're you know, by, by arguing in their courts, they're educating these appellate judges and stuff. But these trial judges aren't getting that because they're not. You know, they're not they're not listening to the appeals. They're not doing all that stuff. So they're not getting that education. And David Rudolph was trying to precipitate a way for them to get that. But they but they were just they just he said that they just had no interest. I was just like, oh, my freaking Lord, how can that be? Um, thank you, Martha. Here you go. Oh, whoops. <sighs> I wish this thing would work better. Okay, here you go. Add to the other and buy the guys around. We all love you. Oh, yeah, I was buying everybody. By the way, those folks that had, uh, you know, super chatted some money over the last week or so when I was getting ready to come to Australia, I did buy a few rounds last night for everybody. Uh, happy to do it. It was fun. Oh, such a great time. Uh, absolutely, it was such a great time. And I'm looking forward to being in Melbourne because I get to get to meet Tracy Keo. I've uh, been looking forward to that. Um, I gotta be honest a little bit, guys. I mean, as much as I love Professor Drissen and Professor Nyrider, and as much as I really truly respect David Rudolph, especially, especially when he was in post-conviction with Michael uh, Peterson, um, he really earned my respect because he had humbled himself so much, man. When he was arguing for Michael Peterson on appeal, he had humbled himself so much. He became a far more effective lawyer. He really, he really, you know, that's when I really started, you know, to respect David Rudolph. Uh, I did appreciate the cocky David Rudolph that we saw during the trial. I had some appreciation for that, but I think maybe the jury didn't. Um, but to watch him and how he had humbled himself uh, in the post-conviction process with Michael Peterson, I thought was just amazing. He, I, I believe, becomes a far more effective lawyer when he humbles himself. Honestly, that's, and I was talking with Karen about this last night at the Duke of Enmore pub, uh, that, that this is how I feel, like watching him and the, just the, you know, the passion, the, the, the kind of controlled, Anger and, 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 the, and just the, the way that he conducted himself in the post-conviction process with Michael Peterson, I just found was, was very effective, in my opinion. So I have a lot of respect for him. Um, and, but as much as I respect, you know, Professor, Professors Nyrider Drizzen and, and, you know, David Rudolph, I'll tell you what, it's been a lot, it's been uh, equally, as, as, equally as important to me speaking to the supporters that came out you know like jojo came out karen came out um penelope and her friend leanne came out we had uh, a few other people that we saw over at the show itself i mean it was just great it was awesome getting to meet all these people getting in, in the and looking forward to meeting more people in melbourne getting to meet tracy keo getting to meet all these really great supporters all these really great people who are continuously creating awareness about this case that is or these cases i should say so those it's 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 been equally gratifying to be able to meet all of them and all of you guys and all that stuff. I, th it's been equally gratifying. I just gotta say, um, you know, some people might think that, you know, they are the, they are the, the, the main, you know, thing that, that, you know, got us all here basically or, or whatever. But you guys know for me, it's about getting more people talking about it. And it's, so it's seeing the interest, um, seeing all that, you know, it, we had a nice little group there at the Duke of Enmore pub last night. We got a cool picture of, uh, of it, everybody. Uh, we'll be putting that on on Twitter today, most likely, so that everybody can see. But it's just been really great. I mean, obviously, it's great to see, like I said, the main names. But for me, it's equally gratifying to get to meet all of you and, and talk to all of you. It's just They're the awesome. Important ones. Hmm? They're the important ones. Absolutely. It's all of us that have, our, have the power to make a difference as well. Yeah. Uh, well, don't 
don't want to upgrade their system. Wow, well, yeah, absolutely. Damn judges think they're untouchable, absolutely. This freaking chat is not working very well. Uh, Night Rider is a great lawyer, yeah. Uh, let's see, Scott. Night Rider is Black Widow from the Avengers. <laughs> Uh, severe God complex. Let's see here. They have a pretty severe God complex. Oh, okay. Very cozy. That bridge is what you see each year on New Year's Eve. Oh, okay. Yeah. Stacy and I were actually talking about it. Do they? Do they? Do they? Uh, do they like string lights on that thing at Christmas time and stuff, and and do it all up? We were actually wondering that. Ju lots of Judge uh, Will, you mean Will Judge Will Fox out there? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure because the is a celebrity to them. Oh well, I, I, I'm a uh, as as Sharon as Sharon Sunshine Young puts it, I'm a I'm the wee star because I'm we just little <laughs> what? Because <laughs> you fit on a TV screen. Yeah, well, you want to see you in real life. <laughs> Susan and Rudolph have a great sense of humor. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, or at least he should be. <laughs> so, uh, so there was a lot of things talked about last night. One of the things I thought was funny when they got to talking about um, when when Laura was pregnant, <laughs> when she had because she got she's yeah. she got married and she's had two kids, and so they were talking about when she was getting preg when she was pregnant. That, that Brendan was like, he would call like once a week and he would be asking like, how is she? Is she okay? Is she doing good? Is she happy? Does she know if it's a boy or a girl? Is, is she going to name it Brendan? <laughs> or is she going to name the, is she going to name the child Brendan? Um, and that sort of stuff. And the best one. And then, and then after she had the child, she had her baby. Then he was calling back and saying, is she okay? When is she coming back? <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so... It was really funny to hear that. It was that was kind of amusing. So it was yeah, it was really good to hear that. Touching, touching. Yeah, very touching. You know, because it, it's just Brendan is just a gentle soul. He is. He's a gentle soul, dude. There's no way he did any of this crap. And, and I was saying out in front of the Duke of Enmore last night, I was talking to some people, and I was saying, you, you look at Brendan's confession. Listen to it. I go. I go, have you ever seen like a kid who like was exposed to like sexual stuff maybe a little sooner than he should have been? And he tries to describe things, like he tries to act like he's a big shot or a player and the women he gets, you know? And you hear some young kid trying to describe things he doesn't understand. That's what I see with Brendan. Yeah. That's what I see in that interview, in that confession. He's talking about things he clearly does not understand. He clearly couldn't have done those things because he doesn't have any freaking understanding of them. And the way that he describes them, and it's obvious. It's freaking so freaking obvious. Uh, it's just, yeah, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> uh, let's see. We are sunk, Scott, dang it. <laughs> oh, yeah, because she's married. <laughs> Power gone low. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be charging. I can get my KY from the cover there if you want. Yeah, let's try it. But I'll keep the flat then. <laughs> What'd you put it in there for? Because that's where the socket is, remember? Do you yeah, know? I guess that's the only ones. Alright, well. Would you do that? Alright. I'll do that now. Let's see, there's all oh, the other thing that we, yeah, I kind of want to talk about the staircase a little bit. Let me see if I can find. Um, Um, they talked about, 
you know, they talked about Kratz's press conference, and I'll say that David Rudolph was very, very, uh, you know, not, he was, you know, very uh, critical of that press conference. And, and Stephen Drizzen, even actually when he was talking about that press conference, he actually stopped for a second and said, David, have you ever seen a press conference like that? You know, or whatever. And, and, and David's just over there shaking his head going, I've never seen anything like that. I can't believe he hasn't, I can't believe he wasn't disbarred just for that. And, and so that was, that was David Rudolph's opinion. But that was interesting. Um, some criticisms that people had of the show. <laughs> they mentioned Stephen Avery's name one time. Now, I personally am not holding that against them. Stephen Avery is not their client. So I don't expect them to mention Stephen Avery a whole bunch. Uh, but they did mention him when it, when it was necessary. When they were talking about the appeals process. When they were talking about what motivated these, these detectives, these investigators, to go after Brendan the way they did. And they were bringing up the factors because they wanted to shore up the case against you know, Brendan's uncle, Stephen. So they really only mentioned Stephen once, and some people kind of wished that there would have been a little more mention of Stephen. Uh, I'm not as critical on that point, personally. I gave out a few autographs. Yes, I did. Uh, I'm sure Eric Hosey is a slippery. <laughs> Off topic. Any signs of Nemo and Sydney? Oh, no, I haven't seen him yet, T1. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, they represent Brendan. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's one thing. Like I said, I'm not super critical of that point because, like I said, they were, they're Brendan's lawyers. So, I mean, it's, it makes sense. So, um, I'll tell you what, it's been interesting getting to talk to Mr. Seabrook, though, folks. Uh, getting to, to chat with him and hang out with him the uh, last couple days. He's, uh, you know, just like I thought from listening to his music and listening to his lyrics, the guy's like me. He's a really deep thinker. He really goes, he goes really deep into things, and and I dig that. So he's got a lot of he's got a lot of anger and passion, but it's controlled, which is another thing I like. It's it's all about controlling that anger and that passion. Um, I was telling him about his music because he was expressing an, uh, a concern he had that went like especially on his acoustic versions of his songs that he felt like he was coming across as angry he you know he felt like he was angry when he was writing them like his anger spurred him to write the songs kind of and he felt like in the acoustic versions that that anger came through maybe a little too much or whatever i told him no i don't think so dude i go you i go you you put it you you've controlled yourself quite a bit i know your anger is much higher than the level that you show in those songs. I go, but you've controlled it and you've dialed it down to, to, the, to the point where when you're in your songs and we, we catch that little hint of anger or that little hint of, you know, of, of you know, noticing that this is not something that makes you very happy. I go, I think it only makes it more, you know, it makes it hit home harder, you know, Stacy. I think that, that the way you control it causes it to have that much more effect and gives it that much more oomph uh, to his lyrics and stuff. So, and he, oh, <laughs> and he did mention he wonders if he'll ever write a happy song, and I think he will. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he will. I think, I, I, I think he's, he's a very, he's a very emotionally, you know, um, you know, uh, sound guy. He's got a lot of, he's got a, you know, he's, he's, He's got his head on straight. He's, uh, he... okay. Um, I was going to say something. You want to talk? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Very quickly. <laughs> For me, the more Eric Cozy is and the more Stacey Seabrook's in this world, the world would be a, be a, be a much better place. Could That's be. The way I see it. It could be. You know? It's hard for me to Indeed. toot my own horn, I but know. thank you but so much, sir. <laughs> I think, I, think, I think that's the case. And, right. I, and I think people out there realize that as well. I'm, I think I'm they sure do. that they, they would say the same. Yep, I think that you're you're definitely probably right. I just, I'm sorry, folks, if I don't always accept your guys' praise <laughs> the best. I, it's odd for me. I yeah, I appreciate it. I love you all. Can you I have, too, can buddy. I have that in writing, that, that I, <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> uh... And the more hods too. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Got to have the hod. 
The hard is the man. Yeah, the hard has got a real dry sense of humor. Hasn't yeah. he? He, is, he is absolutely wonderful. He is he is so funny. <laughs> and he does it in such a such a dry way. It's it's, it's that sort of Aussie um, sort of crocodile and the yeah. <laughs> sort of sense of humor. He called that a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Paul Capaldi. I feel the same way, and I love you guys. That was from Linda K. Breyer. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And, uh, and the more Pauls and Hods and the AAs, uh, yes, Ali Apperson, we yeah, love Ali. Ali yeah. uh, and the Pom Poms, yes, we yes. love Pom Pom, Julie. Uh, you know, I got to meet a lot of people last night. Carol Ann Fitzgerald was there. I didn't get to sit down and chat with her as much as I wanted to, honestly, because um, I was so busy chatting with people, and I just didn't end up getting over to talk to her, but I did intend to, and I'm sorry I missed out on that. But uh, she was there. Um, she was talking with another group of people, uh, the Hod and some other people down at the other end of the table. Uh, but I did I did want to speak with her and talk with her a little bit, but didn't get the chance, unfortunately. Uh, we had, I mean, it was a lot of people. We had quite a few people there that showed up. It was awesome. Just say it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Have you mentioned your t-shirt? This one? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So we're, and and sure. we're giving we're, I'm giving Stacy uh, one of the Brendan shirts. Paul is giving Stacy one of the. This is this is big deal, folks. Paul is giving Stacy one He's of the original it. six shirts he had made up in Scotland. He's giving Stacy one of those. That's the limited edition, folks. That is the ultra limited edition. <laughs> Right there. And so Stacy's gonna have one of the ultra limited editions. Got it. So that's really taking cool. it away. He already took it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't like it, dude. And Just see. Say and, make like <laughs> and and Paul, make sure you laugh when you when you get too serious. <laughs> uh Ali T1 and Pom Pom, yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Um Raw for Australia, Scotland, Canada, and the USA. Absolutely. All four being represented here on this trip. <laughs> this love fest is making me gag. <laughs> are any planning are are any planning to make puddle jump uh, from from down under to the rally in June? Haven't heard anybody say that yet. Uh, other than I know that Mark the Hod himself will be there. Fix this a little bit. Uh, the Hod will be there. So that's something, uh, I don't know how many others from down under here. I didn't hear anybody say so, but I gotta imagine there might be a couple. Uh, we can only see the bottom half of your face. That's why I just adjusted the camera. It was me, I knocked it, so I went up. Oh, you put, your, you put the flag up there. <laughs> uh, I was sitting next to you for a while. Um, yeah, you, you. she was, actually. She was sitting next to me for a while, but I was talking with Karen, and we were getting pretty heated talking about the uh, the staircase. Um, yeah, we were we were getting pretty deep into the staircase, and by the time I turned to, to speak with with uh, Caroline Fitzgerald, I didn't get a chance because, um, she, like I said, she was over talking to Mark, and I was in the conversations. I was in, I just didn't get a chance. Sorry about that, Caroline. But if you want to come on my channel, you and I can get on my channel anytime. We can go start a hangout and you and I can have a chat anytime you want. So, um, yeah, you were talking about the owl theory. They have that and other, a little few other things, but yeah. I know some people don't like the owl theory, and I get that. I really do, because I felt the same way when I heard about it. I was just like, what? Owl? Really? What? And, but then again... There's certain things about the owl theory that makes certain things about this case possibly make sense. That possibly makes certain things kind of come together with 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 yeah. what we see, the way the the nature of the injuries and stuff. Yeah. It's just Mark's I know, crazy. yeah. I mean, I know some people think it's ridiculous, and I totally, like I said, I totally understand. It's it was my first knee jerk reaction too. Like you got to be kidding me, an owl? Come on, what? Yeah. No, you know. But eventually, I looked into it a little bit, and I was just going. Yeah, how do we explain no hemorrhaging in the brain, no bruising in the brain, no fractures of the skull? How do we explain this? Yeah. So I don't know if owl theory is the answer. I don't know that. I'm not saying it is. I am just going to say that I am intrigued by it. And uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it at that. Well, it could be a perfect storm of both the owl and 
buying yeah. herself against it. Potentially. The but even, I mean, the thing is, I'm thinking about it, even if she had fallen down the stairs, there would have been skull fractures. If she was knocking her head going down the stairs, you would think there would have been skull fractures. I don't know. Like I said, it's a tricky, tricky case. The, 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 the Kathleen Peterson case is very strange. The, 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 the evidence presented by the prosecution makes very little sense to me. It doesn't really make much sense. Uh, and so I'm looking the for... The technical and I, term is wonky. Yeah, wonky, technical term. You heard it from Paul first. So... You. No, you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, you know, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying that the, with hundred percent, it was the owls. I'm just saying that there's something there. There's something there that might be worth consideration. And, well, you know. it, particularly why would the neighbor say to David Rudolph, you do need to look into this. Yeah. There must be something that the neighbor has seen that made him think, you do realize that there are these aggressive owls in the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, and these barred owls are known to be aggressive. Yeah. I was recently, when I was looking into this again recently, I kind of did another dive into the into the owl theory about a month ago and was pulling up footage, footage of barred owls in action. And, uh, you know, what I noticed was is, is when they attacked humans, there was always little things. They would go for the eyes. That's what they do. These barred owls, they know enough that they go for the like for animals' eyes. And it's not just humans, right? So the humans you would see that like one guy had like the, the owl had like clawed his eye. You could still see his eye. It was still in his eye socket basically, but the entire eyeball was red. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about he had like red eye, give me some visine. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about dude's eyeball was like solid red. Like, like, yeah, like that. It was crazy. And then and I saw other pictures where these, they, there was just like little poke marks around the eyebrows or on the bottom side of the eye where you'd see like where the claws dug in, where they were trying to claw the eyes on the, and that was on the humans. Then I saw footage from a game camera, uh, you know, that was put out into a forest you know, somewhere or whatever. And you can see a deer running by. And as this deer runs by, this barred owl descends from the top of the of the frame and, and goes right after the deer's eyes. It's like trying to claw the deer's eyes. It's, they know to go for the eyes and stuff like that. So, and the head, you know, that's, they, they yeah. that's what they do. They did, they went for the deer, the head on the deer. They went for the head on a lot of the pictures of the uh, people that I saw that had been attacked. So, I mean, there are, if you guys go and look at the pictures of Kathleen Peterson, there are little poke marks around her eyes. It's, I'm not, I just can't, I can't say it enough. I'm not trying to tell you that owls did it or an owl did it, but I'm saying I can't discount it at this point because there's so many things that seem to get explained by it, but there are still some issues with it. There's still some things that the owl theory doesn't explain. And that is really the main issue for me. And that's why I can't sign off on it. I can't say that I believe it because there are still a couple of unresolved issues that I can't resolve. So I cannot, I cannot in my heart of hearts tell you guys that it was the owls. I can only say that it's interesting and it's worth consideration. And, uh, you know, and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, there's some noisy neighbors below. <laughs> There's our answer. <laughs> what? Mark Hodnott. Uh, that was him. <laughs> was it him clanking away? It just must to, have been because he just that. said, "There's some. There are some noisy neighbors below." <laughs> we fell asleep. <laughs> we fell asleep watching Australia. Well, actually, it was rugby. Right? Yes. That was the last thing we were watching. We fell asleep watching rugby, and uh, we were on the couch. And I woke up. I woke up before you, and I just got up and went to bed. And then, uh, and then I guess Paul heard about four in the morning. Somebody was like knocking on the floor or whatever. Uh, Stacy didn't know what we were talking about, but I think Mark just let the cat out of the bag. I think it was uh, Mark. Well, I am really sorry, Mark. I really apologize. <laughs> sorry, buddy. We fell asleep watching football. We didn't mean to leave it on that long. Uh, let's see. The owl attacking in slippery conditions with the blood and the staircase could have made him multiple injuries. Absolutely. Uh, the owls will chase away intruders while hooting. 
uh, loudly, sometimes striking with their feet. Absolutely. We need to keep an open mind uh, about the owl or we will sound like people who think Stephen is guilty. Absolutely. You know, it's good to keep an open mind because like I said, it's when it comes down to it in the end, the owl theory, there are there are some aspects to it, like I said, that that help to explain, you know, some of the things that happen here. The, the, the lack of severity of the injuries. This is one thing I keep coming back to. You know, Michael Peterson wasn't a frail dude. He wasn't like some frail guy, you know? If he was beating her about the head or something, it would have been far more damage. It wouldn't have just broke the skin, right? I mean, I'm just not going to just break the skin, you know? If he was hitting her with something like that, it would, it would cause skull fractures. It would cause brain hemorrhaging. It would cause those sort of things. And, and we're not seeing that. And so that's why it comes down to how do we explain these injuries? How did they happen? Because I don't believe they happened the way the prosecution or Jim Harden, uh, you know, led the jury to believe. Uh, it doesn't, in fact, doesn't make any sense. In fact, we know now that the, the police, the prosecution, everything, they knew about the blowpoke exactly where it was the entire time of trial. Okay, they found it on when they were there at the house investigating originally. They found that blow poke. Okay, they found that. They took it out onto the front yard. Two officers took it out into the front yard, took pictures of it, and put it back in the garage where they found it. And then proceeded to argue the case, saying that 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 Michael Peterson and 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 his family were hiding it. They knew exactly where it fucking was. They knew exactly where it was and they were trying to say that michael peterson had 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 gotten rid of it that he had done something with it right and then near the end of trial somebody finally goes down into the garage where kathleen's car was because they had probably been avoiding it understandably they'd probably felt somewhat apprehensive about going into that garage that was hers you know i could imagine that that, that, that they avoided going in there for a while, maybe, out of respect for Kathleen or something. So eventually somebody goes down there and finds it. it. There it is. And they bring it in for trial. They have it tested. There's no DNA on it, no blood on it, no nothing. And you can see the cobwebs all over it. The thing was covered with cobwebs and everything. There's no way it was used in a bloody murder. And, and so that's why David Rudolph says, he felt sure when they found that blow poke because the prosecution's theory relied so heavily upon the fact that Steve or the fact that Michael Peterson had gotten rid of it and was hiding it and he was obstructing and all that. And I've come to find out it was right there in the garage. And then we find out later in the post conviction process that they had actually freaking taken the thing out of the garage and photographed it on the front lawn and never turned that over to the defense and then proceeded to. to to say that, that Michael Peterson had gotten rid of it when they knew exactly where it was. This is the type of crap that, that, the, that the states need to start realizing. This can't happen. This is not acceptable. If you can't, if you can't tell the truth to get your conviction, I don't, you know, it's like I said, our criminal justice system is based on truth and fact, not misdirection and, you know, and just devious, you know, tactics, you know, I just don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. The prosecution in the state doesn't like it. If, if a defense lawyer uses, uh, you know, BS tactics and stuff. So why shouldn't they be held to the same standard? Yeah. Right. Why is this? Why does the state, why does it seem like a problem? And, you know, with so many different DA's offices across the country, that they just somehow think that the rules only apply to the defense, not us. Why? Why is that? That's not, that's not called fair. That's not justice. You, you, I mean, think about the words we use to describe our justice system. Truth, fact, justice, fairness, equality, those types of things. Where are they? A lot of the times they're not there. You know? In toxic intoxic air cozy is the beast <laughs> i'm not even intoxicated dude i've only had half of this little glass <laughs> when this is just this is just raw passion <laughs> 
And her sister, woo, was very angry. Yeah, the sister was very angry. Understandably so. I always look. I, I'm always understanding of the victim's families. I get it that Kathleen's sister is very upset. Candace, She's very, Candace. Yeah, Candace is very upset. I get that. And she, she wants somebody to be held accountable for what happened to her sister. I get that. I do. I really do. My heart goes out to her. I'm so sorry what happened. But I don't know what happened. That's my problem. My problem is I don't know. <laughs> so that's in 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 the story that Harden and Frida Black come up with it makes no sense. And then we find out that Devers is, you know, fabricating basically fabricating evidence essentially, you know, uh, or manufacturing it, however you want to look at it. Um or using controlled situations to try to get the outcomes that he was looking for and all that sort of stuff. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. It's not the truth. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's like it's like I've said, the courts are trying to deal in fact. They're trying to deal with truth in fact. Now, there was something that was said last night as well, where they talked about the fact that in court, people think it's about fact and truth. Or well, it's really about an approximation of truth and fact. Right, because you're dealing with a lot of people. You're dealing with a lot of people giving an account of what happened, uh, and, and everything when you're at trial. Hi, Kiyomi. Uh, you're dealing with people giving an account as they remember, it. and sometimes it's not exactly right when it happened. Sometimes it's a year, year and a half. Sometimes years after the crime, and so you're getting these people on the stand, and it's no longer fresh in their head. And so sometimes it's 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 a little. Uh, the truth and the facts can get a little bit fuzzy uh, in that sense because we're relying on people's memories and stuff. So what it comes down to it is, is it's that's why they look for multiple kind of in, things to kind of point in one direction so that they can hone in on what the facts are. Um, you know, different you know multiple accounts that that have uh, you know a very a very similar uh, you know they're saying a very similar type of thing, right? So, and when they get like multiple counts like that, then they know that they they're really getting at the truth or if, you know something factual because there's corroboration from other people than just one party, right? So they were talking about how it's not exactly perfect, but it's meant to get at the truth and the facts as best as possible. That's why it's so important for prosecutors like Harden, like Kratz, Fallon. They are the gatekeepers of the justice system. They are supposed to be. It's up to them to make sure the justice system works correctly. They're, it's up to them to make sure that they have the evidence, that they are not lying in court or misrepresenting things in court, that they're not holding horrendous pr freaking press conferences to remove their, the, the defendant's you know, um, uh, pr presumption of innocence. It's, it's these, these, when, when we get prosecutors and DAs that start doing this, they are not doing their job anymore. They are not, they are not being a prosecutor in the way that was intended by the U.S. Constitution and the way that the, uh, you know, not United States Supreme Court has deemed prosecutors should act as the gatekeepers in our justice system. And when they don't do that, the whole thing goes into question. The entire process gets thrown into question. And... I know there's a lot of people out there that think that the states or the DA's office can do no wrong. That's a, that is a very dangerous attitude. That is a very dangerous thing to think because if you just accept that they, that they're always doing the right thing, you're going to, you're going to allow corruption to abound. You're going to allow corruption to continue. You can't be that blind. You can't, you just can't, you know? It's important to pay attention to these things and not to not allow them to continue. So, um, and then, like I said, it was just a lot of fun. I brought the, I brought the Captain Crunch. We had, we all had Captain Crunch. Uh, when we woke up at Mark's house yesterday morning, it was fun. It is a small glass. It's a it's a little one. It's a it's a half pint. <laughs> See, here's my fist, and here's here's the glass. There you go. See. <laughs> I'm sure it's like you off. <laughs> Seven foot what? 
And oh yes, and this. I, I got to give uh, Penny, Penelope Muldoon one of these last night. I brought it, brought it with me especially for her uh, because she has always been so, so strong a supporter in this case, in these cases for Brendan and Steven. She has just been so great. I mean, so often I, I see her posting on her Facebook page, my videos, other people's stuff, uh, pictures of Brendan, things like that. Always trying to create more awareness, always trying to engage people uh, and that sort of thing. I love that about Penn. Freaking love that about Penn. And so I brought her that special because I wanted her to have it from me. So. Uh, that was really cool. Got you know that was a big part of it. That was so much fun. Was just getting to meet so many people and and now all that. It was just really great. It was really great to see all the support. You know, it's it's what it's all about. It's it's about all of us taking an interest and in, you know that's what it, that's what we got. Uh, let's see, roof of their mouths are wrecked. Right? Nope, nope. Not if you eat it right. Not if you eat it right. <laughs> now, if you're like I was when I was a kid. And you get the biggest spoon in the drawer and you just start shoveling it in without, you know, bothering to like chew it. You know, yeah. Then when you get a lot of it in your mouth, it tears the hell out of your roof of your mouth. It will absolutely do that. But if you use a regular spoon, nice normal size spoon, and then you just eat one bite at a time, your roof of your mouth will be fine. I know a lot of people don't believe me, but it's true. <laughs> the bowl you had last night was at least that size. Yeah, yeah, fully. And it was like mound. It was like half the box, dude. It was anyway. <laughs> sure am I. Yeah, Sean. What's up, Sean? How's it going, dude? <laughs> Get excited when he's on telly. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I love to share my passion with all of you guys, and I love to see yours. <laughs> oh, Ziggy loves that bowl. <laughs> I think, what was that? Oh, yeah, that's the bowl they leave on the kitchen table here. It had a nice little letter uh, for us that they left for us, uh, knowing that me and Paul would be staying in here. So it was kind of cool. Really cool little letter. Here, let me show you. Let's see if it, if it blurs and pixelates, but... This is the card right here. It kind of shows what this area, what these, uh, what this building looks like, uh, and that sort of stuff. This is actually from the backside of it. If you look, like, let me see here. If you look, like, down here, down over here at the end of the building over here, that is where that pub is. It's it's down there. So it's at the uh, basically this is the backside of the building, but on the other end, the pub is on the end, uh, and it's called the Palisade Hotel, and. So we got this really cool little little card. It was really nice. So it's been a lot of fun here. I've been mean, having a really good time. Uh, Scotland is being planned for 2020, Sharon. We're, we are we are currently talking and planning uh, for 2020. Hey, Brandon, what's up, buddy? How's it going? Hit, hit the nail on the head with people assuming the state can do no wrong. Uh, being dangerous idea in a, for allowing corruption. Well said, absolutely, Brandon, absolutely. We cannot be so silly and stupid as to assume that fallible humans can be perfect. That that's that's idiocy. That's ridiculous. We cannot. That's that doesn't make sense. Fallible humans are fallible humans. Okay, that's we are all fallible, all of us. So to assume. That just because you're a DA, that you could do no wrong? That's a slippery slope, folks. Slippery slope. Very slippery. Not safe. Not a good way to think. So. Love Brandon and Meredith. Hey, guys. Glad to see you. Absolutely ecstatic to see you. Here on the live. Uh, what's for lunch today? Did Stacy sing at the pub last night? Lastly, drink water. This whole thing almost last night. So this is water from Norway, actually. <laughs> uh, so that's what I've been, that's what I was drinking last night when we got home. Uh, I didn't have any soda. It's been very difficult for me to get anything to drink around here. 
It just so happened that water was in the fridge. And thank God it was because I was thirsty. <laughs> Very difficult to get around down here. Let's see. When are you coming to Scotland? Like I said, we're planning that one for 2020. Meredith, hi, Meredith. Hi. <laughs> Internet sucks in Australia, really. <laughs> I don't well, you know, it seems like it's working better now. I mean, yeah. you know, it doesn't look, well, at least for me on my computer screen, it doesn't look as pixelated now. Uh, you need to sing, it's buffering. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll have to try and go uh, live a little later. We actually have to, I need to get off of here so that I can make a little tweet and, and arrange to meet up with some people down at the pub here. Uh, hopefully to get together and have a little bit of uh, camaraderie and uh, talk with some more supporters. Hopefully, I don't know how many are going to be around here, around the rocks, you know, down here in Sydney. But, you know, anybody that's interested in coming down and meeting us, let us know. I'm going to go ahead and tweet again. I'm going to tweet that, that address uh, out. In fact, let me go ahead and put that here in the comments. Meanwhile, thank you very much, Captain Crunch, for uh, delivering another pint of lager. Do you know it's called Hawks? Hawks, yeah. Yeah, Hawks. Do you know what it's named after? Uh, who? The, the guy was uh, a former Prime Minister of Australia. Uh huh. And he's obviously now put his name on this uh, beer, which is very good. You know? Uh huh. Recommended by the government, so you might as well get, get stuck in, eh? <laughs> it's, and it's Beddington, right? Beddington. Bet, yeah, Bettington. Miller's Point, New South Wales, 2000. Okay, that's the address for any of you who are here in Sydney and want to come in and see us. We are at that pub at the Hotel Palisade, so come and check us out. How would the Aussies pronounce that? Palisade? Palisade? I don't know. I've always... It's like lemonade? Palisade? Yeah. That's, uh, Palisade's the way I've always heard it pronounced, yeah. so... Uh, thank you so much, and do not forget to tell Stacy Seabrook his number one fan loves him, <laughs> and he is opening doors. He absolutely is, do you man. Know, do you know, that, 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 was, that was the coolest bit so far for me. Was, was getting to sing Stacy songs last last uh, Wednesday night back, mm -hmm. back at Mark's house and then the carpool karaoke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah was right. Like that. It, was, it was brilliant. Yeah. So I'm trying to think when I will go live. Oops, I'd like to go live again today, but when we get back from the opera house, it's going to be probably pretty late. I mean, most, well, I think most of the, you know, U.S. listeners are going to be in bed and asleep. Um, but I can try to go at that time, uh, if you guys want, when we get back from the, uh, Sydney Opera House. Uh, otherwise you can look for me definitely tomorrow morning again. Uh, hopefully I'm going to hope to go a little about two hours sooner than I did today, uh, is my hope. Like I said, the, the headache came up on me and I just had to get that kind of dealt with because it would have been very hard to concentrate on comments, what I want to say, and running the entire live experience, it would have just been difficult if I had a head pounding. So, <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, thank you everybody for showing up. Thank you for being here. Um, obviously, we're gonna come with come at you with some more content here, um, you know, for the rest of, you know, going over this weekend. Uh, I head back to the States on Monday. Uh, so, you know, hopefully I'll get to meet up with some more supporters in the meantime, uh, before I have to head back. Obviously gonna be, Obviously going to meet quite a few. Hey, there's Captain Crunch and all, the all the, all the way back to the house just to bring you that. Yeah, we just had to get that, ride. right? You had to go all the way back just for the Captain <laughs> Crunch, man. Damn. Right? No. But, uh, <laughs> so, there's the HOD. Everybody got to see the HOD. All right. So, like I said, I'll try to go live uh, tonight after Sydney Opera House. Uh, but if it's, it might be a little too late. So, if not, look for me tomorrow morning. Uh, well, what's morning for me? Uh, about two hours before this one started. Like I said, I got started a little late on this one. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, should be earlier tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and we'll see you guys.